Hey, what's going on guys? Tonight I wanna to share a story of how I got this bucket list photo. It's not a super complicated shot, but it did take me several months to get. You have a very small window to work with. Typically you get about 12 full moons in a year, and sometimes you have to skip an entire month because of bad weather. So I'm excited to share all my tips at getting this photo and hopefully you guys will stick around till the end of the video. Or don't. If you guys are new here, my name is Tan, aka Chasing the Milk. I love taking photos of the night sky and I do a little bit of deep space imaging as well. I fell deep into this hobby about a couple years ago and I haven't looked back. Uh, if you guys are interested in how I got into astronomy and astrophotography, I made a little video about it and I'll make sure I leave a link in the description. So other than the Milky Way, one of my favorite things to photograph is the moon. There are so many ways to capture this ball of cheese that's just uh, floating out there in space. The best part is you don't have to wait for a full moon to photograph it. With a basic camera and lens, you can get some pretty cool photos of the moon. Uh, you can get some landscapes like these. You can wait for um, a crescent moon. And if you have a telescope, you can actually get even closer and get some of the cr uh, craters in there too, which is pretty cool. All right, so back to the story, bucket list photo. Where did I get the idea? Uh, I was looking for some inspiration on the interweb and I just went down this rabbit hole and kept on seeing like the coolest photos of the moon. As I'm scrolling, I would just see these amazing photos of people posing and then next to them or behind them is just this gigantic moon and I immediately fell in love with that. I knew I just had to get a photo. I need this photo. I figured this probably would be a two-person job and I knew just the right person. Meet Fred. So Fred would be the brain of the operations. Uh, he's super well-versed in using this app called PhotoPills and we're not gonna dive super deep into the app, but basically it's an awesome tool for planning Milky Way and lunar photos. And for this particular uh, shot, it helped immensely. Fred and I decided our first attempt would be at a really cool historical site in Illinois. The place was called Cahokia Mountains. Just double checking that I have everything because there have been way too many times where I'll pack everything except for like the one important piece that runs everything else. So. I think we are good to go though. Let's do it. My girlfriend and I arrived there with plenty of time before the moon rose and we all went straight to planning. So where's where's the moon? Okay, let me get in here. Alright. Right there. That would be awesome. But like I said, it's a 600 millimeter. So yeah. here's the deal. So we find this cool little hill to try the shot. We pretty much have our spot solidified. Um, we don't know exactly where the moon's gonna be, but we have a pretty good idea. So we can scramble around last minute if we need to. But Fred's using a uh, Canon DSLR camera with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. It's a freaking beast. And then I'm using my Canon 5D Mark III with a um, Skywatcher 102 refractor. So it's giving me a focal length of a thousand millimeters. Guys, if you want the moon to look big, you need reach. If you use a 14 millimeter wide angle lens, the moon's gonna be a tiny little dot. Whereas if you're using a 600 millimeter telephoto lens, the moon is gonna take up a lot more of the frame. So Fred's at the bottom of the hill, we're at the top, we're using walkie-talkies to communicate back and forth because that's extremely important whenever you're doing these shoots. And you know, we could have used our phones, but um, walkie-talkies are just so much more badass. Uh -huh. During this time, Fred is checking his camera settings to make sure everything's okay. Um, he's also making sure that we are actually in the frame and that we are in perfect focus. I head back down the hill to my telescope to do the same and this is the part where we screwed up. All I hear is Fred yelling, the moon is up, the moon is up. The moon is already up, so we're just scrambling around trying to get the right shots. I'm gonna have to haul this big ass telescope with me. But here we go, we don't have a choice. We just gotta do it. Uh. 
Oh my god. Okay. Holy crap. Get the movie. <sighs> Ooh. It's not freaking working. Out of breath, I positioned my telescope as best as I could and started running up that hill. Man, this is working out. I mean, I'm out of breath. I had to haul my telescope from there to over here just so we can get the moon in the background. But we did it. I made it just in time to get some really cool shots, but it definitely was a uh, very intense and stressful moment. So fast forward to a year later, we wanted to try the shot again. This time we chose a location that's much closer to home and it's now become one of our favorite spots to photograph the moon, 370 Lakeside Park. I thought it would be cool to get a photo of the moon behind me with my camera and tripod. It's eight o'clock, the moon should be coming up at half moon. Come on here, we're tripod for Fred. We are looking for a spot to shoot the moon. The moon's gonna be coming up right over this little levee here. I'm gonna be on that little hill. Me personally, I think it's gonna be in between these two poles. You see right here? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. But we're gonna go ahead and start up the car, get it nice and warm. It's almost showtime. All right, I'll take it. That's a compliment. Oh, there's the moon right there. Yeah. All right, let's go. Right now. We're way above the speed limit. How's it looking, Fred? Can you see it on your camera? I can see it on my camera. I'm trying to get it on yours right now. All right. Um, I'm right by the side, by the road. So I drove way past where I needed to be. In hindsight, I should have just left the parking lot and immediately just went up that hill and then used that as a starting point. But instead, I drove all the way to the entrance of the park, parked the car, and then started walking towards the spot, which was nowhere near me. Second time missing the moon come up. Once again, I'm scrambling to get to the spot, out of breath. And you know, we did get some really cool photos, but it would have been a lot better had I been more prepared. A few months go by, I think we had some crappy weather, but Fred and I were both really excited to photograph the moon again. This time we had a full super moon. It was the buck moon and I wanted to get a shot of me using my telescope with the moon behind me. I thought that would have been really cool. Well, you've seen where we did have to be, right? Yeah. yeah. Up on that levee? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if, if you really want to haul all that stuff down that way. I think we can get a really cool shot. I think we're to So why don't, why don't we just, I'll just tentatively plan for it. Like I'll bring this up and I'll figure out once I get there if I want to do this. Because um, worst comes to worst. I think the moon is going to come up between these two posts here uh, based on the PhotoPills app. I'm going to drive over there and I bought another telescope, uh, a much lighter one, and I'm going to set it up there. We are going to try it. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can get it. The wizard doing wizard things. Okay, that's got us right even with the road. And now we are going to drive to this hill and hopefully uh, we'll find the next one.
I did a little live stream on TikTok while we were waiting for the moon, which was pretty fun. Um, if you guys were in that stream, uh, let me know in the comments. These are some of my favorite images of all time, and hopefully for the next full moon, I'll be able to get some more gnarly photos. All right, pro tip. If you want a silhouette shot of the moon, photograph it um, the day of or after. But if you photograph the full moon a day before, you will have this perfect lighting because the moon is going to be rising as the sun is setting and it's not going to be too bright or too dark it's just it's honestly the perfect lighting here's my bucket list shot a uh, huge shout out to fred for taking these amazing photos and i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and um, i'll see you guys in the next one